Alright, good morning, Boundless Universe. This is Sulphur, and I am back with a tutorial video. I'm going to try my hand in Javita's realm of doing things and create a video to maybe help new players do the tutorial. And we're going to start with character creation. So character creation is pretty basic. Um, the face piece at this moment in time is one of ones. There's only one face piece. You can't change your face piece. I'm sure they'll change that over time. Then you have 12 different selections of uh, different types of horns, antlers, whatever you want to consider them. Um, I'm going to go with the boomerang on this character. And then you have different eye tints to go with. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to go for, so I'm just going to click, 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 click until I see something that's, well, makes me say, ooh. Uh, that one kind of made me say, oohs. I don't know. Everyone's luminous yellow, right? It stands out in the dark really well. Let's get something a little more evil. A deep red. There we go. Alright, body types. Male or female? Um, uh, because this is also a first, Im first, maybe might be a first impression type video for players, um, the, f the female uh, character type, well, let's just be honest, it's, it's not very good. Um, the character is very emaciated, you can see the bone structure, it's... Uh, lacking in any shapely curves there's there's nothing attractive about it and yes they were trying to dumb down curves and stuff to be g friendly but at the same time they've made the female look anorexic and uh many female players i know aren't playing female characters uh because of that fact they'd rather play a male character because it at least has muscle tone um Hopefully they will fix this in the future and actually make the char the female character look, well, I don't want to say attractive, but maybe uh, less emaciated, uh, give it some muscle tone or something. Um, so yeah, uh, just wanted to get that out of the way. If you're basing the game off of character creation, please don't. Boundless is far better than the character creation. We're just a bunch of cat people. Uh, really, the only thing that's going to really uh, make a difference between us is our horn configuration and the color of our body. The rest of it is kind of pointless. Even uh, how tall your character is. Is your character short or tall? You don't really notice it that much in-game. I tend to try to make slightly taller characters but not too tall and we're gonna go back to male anyway so body tint of the character creation this is probably the the portion that is going to most set you apart from the crowd um, definitely the tint is something very unique and interesting um, I'm gonna try to make a slightly different character than I've made in the past so I want to push my color boundaries to something I have not yet done I tend to end up getting into the blues purples and pinks how about the red um, so I'll show you the Gleam Club tinting because maybe maybe you're thinking about getting Gleam Club, you're on the fence about it. Uh, there's there's not a whole lot that the Gleam Club has to offer, but it is only $5 a month, and this is one of the things it does have to offer, so why not show that uh, what it has to offer. So here I'm, I'm evidently changing the color of... Uh, 
the highlights. Like, I can definitely tell the horns changing. Um, let's see. Get maybe something more in a gradient, like an orange or something. Oh, that's a yellow, a yellow kind of gradient swell. Um, let's go with that. And the mid tint is is actually the main color here, uh, and I want to stick with with the red I had. And the low tint I think is down. Uh, can't really tell, but it's it's barely noticeable. It's right in here and here. I think. I want to go back to the. Ooh, that. It's kind of interesting that that purplish in there. Yeah, I, I like that. We're gonna go with that. All right, I'm always sulfur something. I've uh, long ago back back uh, in Ultima Online. Uh, when my name, where my name comes from, is the reagent sulfur ash in that game. So I'm gonna go with sulfur ash since I'm running out of sulfurs. All right, so we've gotten through uh, character creation. Um, importing your Steam friends is pretty handy if you have Steam friends, and we're not gonna start near a friend. We're gonna we're gonna assume that you don't have any friends yet and that you're stuck starting on one of the starter worlds um, they recommend USA East to start on you could start on USA West, Europe Central, or Australia we're just gonna go with the recommendation um, for now and we're gonna start on Trinkle World if you're if you're brand new to the game, you've never played it before I implore you to pick a tranquil world. There's there's no real difference here other than on this one mobs shoot at you and hunt you down. This one they don't. If you're trying to come to grips with the game, you're going through the tutorial, you don't need mobs shooting at you. So pick this one and if you want to live on this world you can go there after the tutorial. So, we've started on the Tranquil World. Now I'm moving forward through the Sanctum. There's not really anything to see here. It's just uh, uh, you're kind of on a rail at this point. There's only one way to go, and that's into the Sanctum. Sanctum is pretty cool and pretty to look at. There's all kinds of flashies. You get up here and you grab those two things that were on the, uh, the, the altars. And... Uh, little dudes looking at you. Well, so far you might be concentrating on the center of the screen. If you're concentrating on the center of the screen, you've got to get used to not looking at the center of the screen. You need to move your image up to the uh, the top left, where it says New Dawn. Equip the totem. Equipping objects. So. Right now it has a red circle. It's not always going to be this easy to show you what you need to do. It's telling me to take this totem and put it in my left hand here. And it's telling me to, to take this warp augment, combine the warp augment with the totem. So you pick it up and you take it to the totem and pow, you just drop it on it. You've combined the totem with the warp augment. Now you need to use the augmented totem, that thing, to select a landing site. So close out of your inventory. Look up at the planet. This is Beckon, which is the the uh, non-hostile USA East world. There are other worlds. You just don't see them in the sky right now because this is the one you chose to start on. Um, I suggest trying to look for... If you press B, 
you will see a beacon view. Uh, beacon view. This is land that is owned by people. So there's smaller settlements here and here, but the majority of the people live here in what's called Aquatopia. That's the name of the city that's forming there. Um, I suggest to try to start near the capital, like Aquatopia, because you're going to be near gateways that are going to allow you to travel from planet to planet. Uh, but n not right in the gate, right in, in the middle of the city, because you're not going to be able to do anything. You need to be outside of it a ways, like maybe right about here ish. so that you can actually do the tutorial without having owned land getting in your way. So right now you have a landing site. Now if you look back up it says a new dawn set your warp destination. I just did that. The speedy answer to traveling the known worlds obtained through craft or trade. Warp conduit blocks are used to build warp conduits like those in the sanctum. Look at either of the warp conduits at the far end of the sanctum then press E to interact with it and activate a warp to your chosen. So, warp conduit blocks. Look at them. Ah, here's some warp conduit blocks. Here's some warp conduit blocks. If you've never played this game, you may not know that these are warp conduit blocks, but they are. So, walk up to them. And you'll see that the press E to interact symbol has popped up in the middle of your screen. Go ahead and do that. So now you've opened it up. Um, for me, it always defaults to friends, which uh, is cool and all, but it should really default to locations. Go to the landing site, open the warp. You're going to notice that the cost is 0C right now. This is the only time in the game that the warp will ever be free. Um, from here on after, any time you open a warp, depending on where you are, will cost money. So, you could end up staring at uh, these conduit blocks forever. If you're not paying attention in reading and it says break blocks to open, well, you should break the blocks to open because that's what you need to do to actually get through the, the, the portal. So now, we're supposed to walk through. You can look at it first and, and get the full, oh my, it's a portal, uh, before you step through. Or you can just jump there. So now we're through. We're in the the world of Beckon, and the Viceroy of Beckon, as it just said, is Dune Dragon. He's uh, the primary prestige holder in the capital city. That's why he's Viceroy. Um, and that's his pyramid over there that you see in the the air. It's quite a nice guy, actually. So now, depending on your playstyle, you could be a sociable person or you could be an antisocial person. I, uh, I say those are great and there's different ways to play, but at this point in time, it doesn't matter if you're sociable or unsociable or what, you need to get through the tutorial. Do the tutorial. Read the tutorial. Follow the tutorial. If you've never played this game, concentrate on the tutorial, which is on the top left of the screen. Right now, it's telling me to collect an objective reward coffer from the exchange in the main menu. So, to access the main menu, I'm going to press tab. I'm going to see that there's the exchange here at the bottom of the list. And it has this one little icon, which is telling me that there's a reward available. So I'm going to click on the exchange. I'm going to go to rewards. And I can either quick, uh, either select quick collect. If there's a bunch of them here, it'll do it all all at once instead of clicking on them one at a time. Or you can click on them one at a time. So I clicked on it. I got my 25 coins, 200 XP, and 60 cubits. 
this is your first free gift of cubits, basically. You've done nothing in the game yet, but they've handed you free cubits so that they can teach you about one of the primary aspects of the game, and that is how to use cubits to unlock plots in the exchange. So, right now we're going to use the cubits to unlock plots in the exchange. It wants us to buy two a uh, two-plot wood coffer. So we're going to go here to plots. We're going to find the two-plot wood coffer, and we're going to buy it. So now we are setting up camp. Gather tree trunks in your inventory. That's two of them, and gather foliage in your inventory. Four of them. So. We will now close the exchange. We will take our mighty totem, which is just a starting tool. It's nothing fancy, nothing you have to cherish. You can make free ones at any time you want in your inventory without even spending a resource. And we're going to take this, this mighty free horrible tool and we're going to walk up here and start whacking on some resources. Leaves are a great thing to whack early on, because leaves can provide food. As you just saw, I got one raw starberry. You can eat raw starberries without getting sick. Other raw food is not so forgiving and will cause you to get sick. So this is a nice little flat place that we can do the tutorial on. Right now it says handcraft a campfire. So I'm opening up my inventory. I'm going to the handcraft selection tab here. And I'm going to craft a campfire. Please note that handcrafting is not something you should do often. It's the the least efficient way of crafting. But to get started, it's the way you have to do it. Now I'm crafting a campfire. It's important to know what a campfire is. Uh, so if you read what the campfire says, it's a simple beacon for claiming land, protects items and furnishings placed within its reach from other citizens, and world regeneration until the campfire burns out. Yes, the campfire will burn out. We're talking in hours, not in days. This campfire is not a permanent beacon. It is only a temporary beacon to allow you to do the basics in order to build an actual beacon that won't burn out in a few hours. So this is completely temporary. Do not rely on it to protect your build. So we've crafted one. Now we're going to equip the campfire. Uh, so basically we're going to go to our inventory, we're going to pull this campfire in here, and now it's equipped. Now it wants us to place the campfire to set up a temporary base. Um, I want everyone to know that when you're doing the tutorial, you should be actually only creating a temporary base. Because you want to do the tutorial, but you may not want to live where you are. I strongly recommend doing the temp tutorial and putting off figuring out where you're going to live for later. Uh, yeah, just trust me. This is a better way to go about it than than trying to pick some place that you first see off of a notion and saying this is going to be home. Try to avoid doing that. All right. So as you can see, there's this crazy white hue here, right? So that, this is what we call the beacon view. Um, so if I was to place this campfire in there, that's what it would claim. If I was to place it in this plot, or in this, uh, yeah, this 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight section of blocks, which is a plot, it would claim this one. If I put it over here, it would claim this one. Because I want to be in this flat area, 
I want to put the campfire down here in the flat area so that it claims it. Now, something to know about campfires is they claim two plots. So remember you bought two plots? Well, you just used two plots when you put that campfire down. But those two plots are only there temporarily. Uh, when that campfire burns out, those plots are going to go poof. They're not going to be there anymore. All right, so the next step in doing the tutor tutorial is getting crafty. So we're supposed to collect an objective reward coffer from the exchange. Now, we remembered last time that w in order to get to the exchange was to press the tab key to get make reach the main menu. So we're going to do that. We're going to go down to the exchange. We see we do have a reward coffer down there. This is a, a little shortcut icon to let you know that, hey, you've got something to claim. And we're going to go to rewards, and we're going to collect it. Last time I clicked collect and the little box popped up. Now I'm going to hit quick collect and you see no little box pops up. If you don't want to watch that animation you can just hit quick collect and you can avoid the animation. Now we're supposed to handcraft timber from tree trunks. So we're going to run up here and we're going to whack a few more trunks off of a tree. So I've got more wood than I really need at this point, but I'm just going to hit a couple of, of uh, extra trunks right now so that, uh, yeah, I have more resources to deal with going forward. Alright, so that's plenty. Um, I didn't have to move, I could have done it right there. So I go to my inventory, I go to handcraft, and now I'm supposed to make timber. Again, you want to do as little as possible inside of your inventory handcrafting. This is the least efficient way to, to burn resources. But I need to do 10 for the purposes of the tutorial. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So now I've satisfied the tutorial objectives to handcraft uh, timber. Now I need to turn that timber into a crafting table, again by hand crafting. So I go to the crafting table, and I craft one. Um, so right now, most of the things we're making are happening instantly. Uh, that's not always the case in Boundless. Things will, in the future, have queue times that you'll have to worry about. So we're just going to toss that guy down there. We don't really care where we toss it because we're not going to live here. This is a temporary base. Please remember, this is temporary. And if you look at the campfire right now, it's showing that it's fueled for 1 hour and 56 minutes. So that's the game sh telling us that uh, the campfire is only going to protect these two plots for 1 hour and 56 minutes. <coughs> now, we need to... Uh, collect 12 timber, uh, 12 sticks, and, and 12 foliage, and have them in our inventory right now. So I'm going to go into the crafting table. It hasn't taught you how to do this yet, but uh, I'm going to put my twisted wood in there. I'm going to go to recipes. Go here, and I'm going to click on bulk craft. Bulk craft is very um, important you single craft, one twisted wood becomes two. But if you bulk craft, four twisted wood becomes ten. So one makes two. So if you use four of them, that's eight this way. But if you do it this way, you get ten, which is two for free. So all woods bulk craft. So now I have 
ten. But I need, still need more wood. So, go back up here to the tree. Smack it around a little bit. Alright, so, you notice that I just leveled up. Now you may be excited about putting skills into your character and making your character better so that he can, like, break blocks faster and, and basically all around progress faster. If you go to your character tab right now and click on skills, you're going to notice you have zero skill points. And you're going to be like, but I just leveled up. Surely I get skill points from leveling up. You do, but they don't go straight into your character. I don't particularly think this is a good design, but in order to get your skill points, you have to go to the exchange and find this stone level coffer, which is sitting here with four skill points. So if I collect this... I've got four skill points, so if I go back to the character slot, I now have four skill points to burn. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now because it's going to make it easier to break locks. Um, these things down here, ignore them. You don't know what they do yet, so don't invest any points in them. I will explain at a later time what they do, but for right now, you want to concentrate on your attributes. Uh, if you're selecting points and attributes, you really can't screw up your character too badly. Um, the best attributes to select that will always be useful are power. Uh, power is, is typically useful for any build. Some of these other attributes are far less useful to many builds, like intelligence for example. Um, unless you're a healer, which is not a lot of characters in this game, or a person planning to use the Center Forge, intelligence is not going to be a stat you're going to use very much. Luck is huge for gatherers. Um, uh, hunters, it's, it's really good for hunters. And uh, miners, it's good for. So luck is uh, a stat that's, that's pretty well used across the board. Zeal is your energy. energy. Energy makes you able to do stuff and do it a lot. Um, energy is, is, is like power. Just about everyone needs some energy, so this is a good stat to pick. Uh, this is the attribute bonus, which basically puts two points in everything. But if you just pick one of these, you get ten points. So if you level this all the way up, uh, which is eight points in it, you'll get eighty points. Then with the uh, additional five points here, it'll take it up to ninety and 90 is the maximum amount of attributes you can have in any one stat. Vitality is your health pool. Um, control bonus is how far you can reach. Uh, blocks. Dexterity is how fast you swing. Uh, agility is how fast you move. And yeah, so that's everything I'm talking about. Um, when you're starting off, I highly recommend to try to go with 5 power and 3 dexterity. If you have those eight points put into attributes, uh, it's the most efficient way to basically break blocks on a starter world with basic tools, is five and three. So I'm going to put uh, three here and one here for right now. I'm going to close this. Before I was doing 200 points of damage to these things, it should change a little bit with the totem. Now I'm doing 230, so not a huge increase. But again, we're just using a basic totem, so that's not a um, big deal. Alright, I need 
need some foliage. Yeah, this is not the shortest tutorial in any stretch of the imagination. But then Boundless is a game is not a game that uh, things happen quickly. Uh, it takes a little while to craft and place and, and do things in a voxel universe. Alright, I've collected my foliage. Now I'm going to go back here. Open this up. Pull the trunks down. Make myself 12 sticks. I'm going to bulk craft them, which is actually going to make 20 sticks, but it's far more efficient. I'm going to grab those 20 sticks, put them in my inventory, because I need them in my inventory to satisfy things. And I'm going to go over here and make some more timber by bulk crafting, people. Bulk craft. I'm just going to kill it all. Okay, so there we go. We've got more timber. And now we've satisfied getting crafty. Now we need to make a wood axe. We need to acquire a wood axe, wood hammer, or wood shovel. Um, you could run to a store uh, and try to buy these things, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to find many stores selling wood tools. Um, wood tools are garbage. And about the only time you'll ever use them is for this purpose of com of uh, finishing the tutorial. So I'm going to make one of each and finish the tutorial. Well, not finish the tutorial, but finish this step. <coughs> I'm just going to make one. Remember I said always oh, ball craft? Well, don't ball craft things you don't want many of. Right, those are, however, instant crafts, so that's one thing that's going for them. So now we've completed that. We've gotten crafty. So now a base for the long haul. The game really wants you to set down roots, and we're gonna. We're gonna we're gonna follow along for now, but we're we're really not putting down roots. This is not where we're planning to live. So collect an objective reward coffer. So go back to the exchange, collect your objective reward coffer, and continue on with the tutorial. Now it wants rocks in my inventory and foliage in my inventory. Um, I used all the foliage already, so I'm going to just place these new tools into my hand. And the wooden axe is better than the totem. So I need some more foliage, ten of it. Do I see I'm doing 345 damage instead of, uh, what was it, 30 here? Or it was 230 with the totem. Chopping some leaves. You do a 
fair amount of chopping things in the game. Kind of, you know, basic. Alright, so I got enough leaves for now. Now we need some stone, right? different types of rocks. Igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and metamorphic rock. Uh, they look differently, and uh, they'll all make the same things, but those things will appear differently. supposed to craft a beacon control with the crafting table and some basic beacon fuel. So a beacon control takes four rock, four timber, and two foliage. You don't need to bulk craft a beacon control because you really only need one of these, though two is useful. So I'm going to craft the one. Remember I said there's queues for things? Well, beacon control is one of the first things you're going to build that has a queue. It's not a very long queue, it's like 15 seconds. Uh, but still, uh, as the game progresses, you're going to find things take far longer to build. And we also need to make basic beacon fuel. That requires 10 foliage, we have 11. That was instant, by the way, so we got that. Now it wants us to place this thing down, and uh, basically uh, permanently claim the plot that the campfire is in. So we're just gonna go with that for now. Because thankfully you can undo these things. Okay, so add the basic beacon field to activate the beacon and give your beacon a name. So go to fuel, drag the fuel out of your inventory and put it into the beacon field slot, then click on Add. Now, so you you notice that it now says 24 weeks, 2 days, 20 hours, when the beacon fuel only said 3 weeks and something. This is because I'm a Gleam Club member, and I purchased Gleam Club for 6 months. So, 24 weeks, 2 days, and 20 hours is when my Gleam Club expires. So my beacon is fueled as long as I am in the Gleam Club. Um, so that is one of the other perks for spending $5 to become a member of the Gleam Club. Anyway, I'm supposed to rename the beacon, give your beacon a name, and we'll just call it Tutorial Site. So now we're at the tutorial site. Now we're going to use qubits to unlock plots in the exchange. So we've already got two plots. We need a third plot, but you cannot buy just one plot. So we're going to have to buy two plots. So we'll go to the exchange, quick collect on our, our stuff. Quick collect on more stuff. Now we've got 200 qubits. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to cost 60 qubits to buy two more plots of our 200. Yeah. 
So acquire or craft a beacon plotter with a crafting table. That's this guy here. Um, so crafting one is going to take 10 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and craft it. So we've acquired it. It came into our inventory. So extend your beacon using a beacon blotter. Again, it's trying to get us to set down roots that we don't really want to do, but we're going to do it now because, you know, we're doing the tutorial. So there, I extended my beacon. Right now, so you notice that when I picked up the beacon plotter, it put me in beacon mode. And now I'm in beacon mode until I turn off beacon mode. You may or not know that beacon mode, uh, the side of the screen is showing a tip, which is called plot view. And it's telling you how to toggle it by pressing the B key. So I pressed the B key, it went away. All right, energy to the max. Collect an objective reward coffer from the exchange. Skill points, I already uh, spent my skill points, I already acquired food. Um, equip and eat food. So, there we are. I already had the full up buff, so it already crossed that one up. Now I just have to waste food to accomplish this. So. <laughs> There goes a star bar, just for the purposes of finishing the tutorial there. Okay, new tutorial objective, the journey begins. So, your journey begins. Complete an objective in the journal. So this is kind of the end of the tutorial right now. Um, when you get to the point of completing an objective in the journal, you uh, so you go to journal. It, it, this is kind of the last thing that the tutorial kind of points you at, and that's to how to get to the journal. So you can pin things in your journal, right? Objectives. Like the other one I can do is if you build it, they will come. I could place 32 blocks. I can pin that objective. So now I have two objectives. You can have up to three objectives pinned. Uh, but we need to, I guess, concentrate on the tutorial objective, which is complete an objective in the journal. And that objective is, if you build it, they will come. So this is the only objective in the journal right now uh, to do. So basically, I need to place 32 blocks inside of my temporary home. It didn't say uh, what blocks. So I'm going to just cheese it a bit, because I don't want to live here. So we placed four. So this would be far easier if I had more blocks.
this is a little time consuming, but... Trust me, you want the place you pick to live is some place you really want to be for the long haul. You don't want to get tied down to where you did your tutorial. accomplish that. So this is where it gets a little more difficult. Torches um, require flint, and storage blocks require glue, and doors require uh, nothing more than rock. Um, but anyway, so Flint and glue is going to turn into your new hurdle. And the game doesn't do a very good job of telling you how to get flint or how to make glue. So, uh, this is where, if you're watching this, this is going to come in handy. So, we're going to need a stone furnace to make glue, which also requires flint. So the first thing we're going to need is at least one flint for a stone furnace and at least one flint to make torches. So we're going to need two flint and we're going to get that by basically digging gravel and or mining sedimentary rock. So we're just going to run down here and I see some gravel right there. We're going to start digging up this gravel. Actually, let's go to the exchange. Quick collect. Check out my character, and yeah, I do have some. So remember how I said five and three is the way to go? Go ahead and apply that five and three, and confirm your skill points. Come back out here. You swing a bit faster, as you see, and you do a lot more damage. This is much more effective with stone tools. Alright, so we're having no great luck right now, at least getting flint. But we are going to need stone to build doors and other things. And since sedimentary rock also has a chance of giving us flint, we're going to just start hammering away at this sedimentary rock.
going to be needing a lot of stone. And uh, right now I've collected a fair amount of stone. Uh, turning that, or turning the rock into stone it does take some time. So I'm going to run back to our crafting table. And I'm going to put this, uh, this rock we've collected into it and start turning it into stone. So you don't actually have to put it into the table. You can have it in your inventory and you can just hit ball craft here. Now you're going to see each ball craft takes 50 seconds. So I'm just going to queue up as many ball crafts until I run out of stuff. And that's basically eight of them. And then I'm just going to close this, ignore it, go back to doing what I was doing. One plant. Woohoo. Alright, so gravel is not being very helpful. Um, another, probably, probably would have been the best way to get flint, other than just spam digging gravel, um, is to look around. We're looking basically for a boulder lying on the ground. So that's a, a fiber slave, a desert sword that will give us a different type of resource. We're looking for something like that. It looks like this area has been picked clean. Wait, there's one. And we got our other flint we're going to need. So yeah, that's another way to get flint, probably easier maybe to look for the boulders. Alright, our crafting table is still tied up doing this. Um, so we're going to run back down here. And collect some more stone, because, you know, you're always going to need stone. Broke that stupid wooden hammer. Yay! So now 
Now we no longer have a wooden hammer. And our crafting table should be done by now, so we can start moving on here. Oh no, we still have a minute left. So, let's grab the wood axe. Chop some more wood, because we'll always need wood. So I'm not making more crafting tables uh, for a reason. Um, we could make more crafting tables and obviously craft more stuff simultaneously, but that's more stuff to move because this is just a temporary base and we don't plan to live here. So we want to keep our, uh, our inventory as free of clutter as possible. And basically... Keep our inventory with things that we really need at this point in time. And really needing stuff is always going to be wood, rock, stone, and foliage. Those are the things that you really need at the beginning. All the rest of it is kind of uh, background noise. Okay, I broke my axe. Finish that off the totem. And crafting table's pretty much done. Okay, so we need to acquire four torches. So we're a new player, we don't know what torches need. So we're gonna click on torches. We see that it needs sticks and that needs flint. Um, one singular craft of of uh, this will be fine for now because you only need four, but that does need, we're going to need sticks and flint, so we need to go, oh, I already have sticks, so I'm just going to do a craft. Then uh, acquire storage blocks, uh, which, well, let's move on to doors. So we can do plain wood doors out of uh, timber, which means 16 timbers needed, and we only have like 13, so if we put these trunks down here, go to recipes, and turn that into more timber, remember to bulk craft, and because bulk crafting timber is instant, let's do a couple of those. So we'll make the plain wood doors. Um, we could do a ball craft, but that makes ten of them, which is kind of overkill. We only need two at this point to satisfy the, the tutorial. We can see that the plain wood doors have a uh, uh, a queue. We only have one silly wood tool left, and that's the shovel. So let's just dig some stuff, shall we? So that's clay soil. Peaty soil. So let's uh, let's dig the peaty soil because the peaty soil is going to be useful to us here shortly. So there's many ways to fuel a furnace, and uh, we're going to need to fuel a furnace in order to make glue to make the storage blocks. And peaty fuel is a pretty good early 
game of fuel. I think it's better than wasting our precious wood to get burned up in a furnace. You could also um, mine for coal. And coal is probably more optimum, but we don't currently have that tool, and we need to get rid of this wooden shovel anyway. So let's keep digging up this peaty until our wooden shovel breaks. Shovel is broken. So we need to acquire these. So we acquired that. We acquired that. But again, we can't acquire the storage box because we need glue. So, with the game again, it doesn't explain to you how to get glue, but I know that it's in a furnace. I'm just going to craft the one because, again, we're trying to limit the stuff we're going to need to move in the future. And we'll just sit here and wait on that. Alright, we have some strange colored furnace here, huh? And that's because of the material we used to craft it out of. Alright, so there we have our furnace. Um, now to use this bad boy, you need to put fuel into it. So we just dug a bunch of peaty, right? And that's going to be fuel. Um, it's not the best fuel, but it's fuel nonetheless, and will work for our objectives. Uh, we have some sap, which is part of the ingredient to make glue. But we don't have the other ingredient. The other ingredient is bone. And bone comes from killing mobs. So we're going to need a tool to help us kill mobs. So we're going to make our first stone tool, which requires some foliage. So I'm just going to run over here with my totem and whack some foliage. place all of our tools right now. The most efficient way would have been to make a stone axe first to make the process of gathering foliage faster. Difficult to get back up there, but uh, we'll make it happen with our mighty totem.
so we need a stone sling bow to kill mobs with. We need a new stone axe. Um, which is going to require... More sticks. We're going to do a bulk craft of sticks. And it says... Oh, we're waiting on the stone sling bow's queue. Sticks are instant, sling bow takes a little bit of time. So we're just gonna craft one for now. Yes, I know I said oh it's bulk craft and bulk crafting stone axes. There would have been nothing wrong with that. That actually would have been a good idea because it would save you resources. However, I wanna get that stone axe ASAP. So I can so the singular craft is a little quicker. But again, less resource efficient. I like to have my tools on my right hand. Didn't I just make... So now we gotta go hunting some mobs, which seemed like going down this direction was easier for traversing. Also, you'll notice it's a little dark out, so we can put torches in our hand. stock hat. Uh, there's something up there. You can tell that water puts the torch out. low level, I don't have any hunting skills, and trying to kill a stock wild stock could get me killed, so I'm gonna go past that guy. Ignore him and look for his smaller sibling. Or just watch the stout wild stock drown. some other goodies. Rainy than it should be for a home planet.
that's a stone. So this is often a tactic used to kill mobs like stout wild stock that are, well, very dangerous to you. Just need to hit them. One bone do for now. Uh, yeah, I think it might. I think one glue does make four storage box. Okay, so now we need to head back to where we came from, which is the little orange symbol on the compass. Space bar to swim, by the way. Throw that bone in there. Now we now have a valid thing. It's going to take three minutes because the fuel we're using isn't exactly the fastest fuel, but it's fuel nonetheless. Now we can use that three minutes to get our other um, stone tools. So we're going to need stone hammers and stone shovels. So we will go use this wonderful new stone axe, now that we're all high tech. And you can see it does 500 damage, which is a lot more than, than before. Plus we also have some better skills now too.
So I'm gonna do a ball craft of stone hammers, which will take a minute and a half. Um, and just a singular stone shovel is fine for now. Check on the glue. The glue has about a minute to go. Gotta maintain being productive, so I'll chop some more wood. Notice that our energy is getting down and we actually lost some health. So if we, if we get our energy bar back up to full so that we get the well-fed bonus, now our health is going to recover. So one glue only makes two, so we're going to have to hunt down some more mobs. There's some over there. Try to pick the smaller ones, and remember, if you even fire anywhere near a wild stock. Yes, it gets angry at you if you fire near it. So be careful not to aggro other wild stocks you're not wanting to fight right now. Bone. 
Alright, so we were... making more tools. Now we have our shovel and our uh, shovel. Shovel and our hammers. Let's take these hammers and get us that oh so important stone. And maybe find something, you know, cool in the process. Grab these uh, things that I've collected. Just almost level this up again. Go to the character. We have four skill points to spend. Um, so again, uh, you're a new player, and there's a lot of skills that are now even more skills that are opening up. This one right here, volume crafting, is amazing for maximizing your your stuff and turning it into XP. Um, you, I'm doing bulk crafts now because that all, that's all I have access to, but if I had access to mass crafts, well, it's even better than bulk crafts. So, I have four skill points. This requires five. I'm going to actually save up, and I'm going to recommend that uh, you do too. While this is definitely for a crafter, um, it is kind of the first character type you end up building, really. And so, instead of fighting it, just go with it. Pick up volume crafting and start turning all the resources like stone that you're gathering into XP by basically turning it into, into rock. Turn the stone into rock in huge quantities and just collect the XP as all of these things finish. So that's my recommendation to you to give you a little bit of, of uh, well, somewhere to focus your skill points that is going to be useful for leveling. And will get you more skill points because you're leveling that you can then maybe start dabbling into other things until you figure out the game uh, on your own. Again, this is this is more to get you through the tutorial, to get you off to a good start. Uh, what you do from here on in, you know, you do. Uh, sometimes you have to make mistakes to learn. But go ahead and do it. There's there's no right or wrong way to play this game. There's there's so many different ways to play. Uh, just have fun doing it. And the game also gives you a lot of uh, cleanse points, so you can easily uh, take something back and put it into a different skill if you're not happy with what you put your skills into. And you even get three uh, complete skill respects as well, which is really handy.
Um, if you didn't know, you can hold uh, the left control key to switch this hand. Anyway, that's how I do it. There's there's other ways of doing it. And that's in conjunction with the scroll wheel on the mouse. So now we have two more storage blocks. Um, we have all four. Now we should have everything in our inventory. That objective is done. So if you build it, they will come. Place torches, place the doors, place the storage box in your beacon. Again, it's really wanting you to set down roots here. So we've placed all these things. We've we've accomplished that objective. Add items to your beacon to increase prestige. Um, if we go to the journal. We'll now see that other things have have opened up. Um, and this one here is move on from your basic beacon foundation with little exterior and interior design no beacons complete without walls doors blah 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 add items to your beacon to increase its prestige etc i'm gonna unpin that objective uh because basically right here is is when i consider us done with the tutorial from now on, you can go to the journal, you could pick any of these that you want to do, and as you do them, more will open up. There will be more objectives that will open up. But at this point, you have accomplished the tutorial. You have gotten yourself off to a good start. You should understand the basics of the game at this point. Now it's time to go find somewhere to actually live. Somewhere where you want to hang your hat. But in order to do so, we need to pick this stuff up, right? And we need to reclaim our plots that we placed. So we're going to pick this stuff up.
So if you break the furnace, the stuff that's in it should just automatically migrate to your inventory like it did. Um, before you break this, please remember to make this very handy tool you're going to need. It's called a beacon plot remover. So this is my part of your, your tutorial. Plot a beacon plot remover. So that's done now. Grab that guy, put it in your inventory. Remember that extra one? Yeah, get rid of it. Bye bye. This uh, plot on the top, bye bye. So now there's only one plot left, and that's the plot that's associated with the beacon. So we're going to go over here and we're going to go get rid of this campfire. It's gone. If we break the crafting table, the stuff that was in it should automatically add to our inventory. You're going to notice our inventory is getting pretty packed full of stuff. And that's why I often, why I was saying, don't try not to fill your inventory with a lot of stuff at this point because you're going to need to be able to move. Now the last thing left is the beacon. So just whack it down. As long as it's the only plot that's left, you can break the beacon. If those other plots would still be there, I would not be able to break this beacon. You have to deplot every plot that's connected to it before you can actually break it. Now, I open up my inventory and I have zero plots to use of four land plots available. So those land plots that it, it made you use doing the tutorial, you have recovered them. You have all this stuff from doing the tutorial. You have the information of now knowing how to play the game. Now it's time to go see the Boundless Universe and figure out where you want to live. And that's also why we started over here by this town of Aquatopia. Because now, we can run to the big town and find the portal hubs. So that we can go see the other planets and, and discover where in the world do we want to hang our hat? Do we want to be a a hermit that finds the very uh, edge of the galaxy away from everyone? Or do we want to get involved in one of the many communities in Boundless? I mean, if you're wanting to get involved in communities, well this one right here, Aquatopia, is one of the biggest and most active, so it could be a good place to start. Now, if you are a community-minded person, uh, I would recommend uh, looking for the leadership of the, the settlements and contacting them and asking them if they have any particular uh, idiosyncrasies or rules or or things they're trying to do. Uh, being being a long-time player, there's there's nothing worse than having a, a newish player or a newer player or or not. It doesn't even have to be a new player. It could just be a veteran player who's rude, who decides that he's gonna throw up a plot or two right next to where you were planning to plot, and it might have been obvious you were planning to plot that. It might not have been obvious you were planning to plot that. But whatever it is, it's thrown a monkey wrench into your plans, and now everything's like, ah, oh, what are we going to do now? There's this mud hut next to me, and, uh, yeah. So it's always good to figure out who lives in the area and find out if they want a neighbor, or 
they might want a neighbor, but they might not want you to be immediately your neighbor. They might want you a few plots down the way. In which case, talk to people. Um, don't just uh, find a plot like this, like this ship, and be like, ooh, you know what would be cool with a ship? If there was a dock wall here or something, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plot this, this spot right here, and I'm gonna build something straight out that way. Uh, maybe a, a big building. Yeah, I'm gonna build a big building right here. And now this guy's like, uh, I built a ship, and you built a building in front of me. Now my ship doesn't look like it's sitting in a harborage able to sail out now it's looking like it's blocked by a building who would build a building over the water in front of a ship so it's things like that just you know uh, if you move into a big community like Aquatopia for instance here try to contact the people you'll be living near and the leadership of the community that you're going to be living in. For Aquatopia, that would be Dune Dragon. And or uh, the Mobius. There's also many other people who are, are key to Aquatopia. Um, but yeah, just look around. If you don't know who these people are, you can figure it out by uh, who is the warden of the town? Usually the warden of the town is going to have some sort of idea of, uh, of who leads the town, even if it's not him. The warden doesn't necessarily need to be the leader of the town, um, or the leader of the group that's kind of, you know, the main group in the town, but he will know who is and who to talk to. So anyway, now we're wandering into downtown Aquatopia, and we're looking for civilization. Well, we've definitely found civilization, right? There's civilization all around us, but is this the civilization that we want to be part of? Or maybe this isn't really the planet that we want to be on. So we can wander in here and we can look for these bluish purple icons that denote portals and look there's a big portal right in front of us let's run through it oh my god we're now on another planet we are now on Finata which is across the universe from Beckon and we look around and we're like wow this place looks cool you know uh, What's going on here? Uh, boy, sun's really bright that way. Uh, there's some cool things around here. Some cool shops, a shopping alley. Huh, what's for sale? And so you can just get lost kind of looking at the stuff. But you're exploring. You're figuring out the stuff and where it is rather than just boxing yourself in with an anchor wherever you did the tutorial at. So I just ran through another portal, and now we have a, a smaller community in a place called Storis 2. Um, wow, you know, this is kind of a nice looking place. Maybe this is more your style. This might, you might see a place that screams, oh my god, I want to live right there. Or maybe this isn't quite it. So you keep walking around, right? And and you discover the portal secret gateway here. And now now you're like in Gravidius Tay in the center of the portal seeker hub. And you discover what is this? There's portals everywhere. And they take me to this place called Betula. Oh my god, it's blue. That place was red. And you look around and you're like, Lamless? What's Lamless? Oh, it's a dangerous world. That's that's what the icon said. 
And you look around at Lamless and you're like, man, this place is pink. And red. And really bright. And I don't know if this place is for me. Uh, but it's got a dancing queen club? Whoa, neat. Green gear? Huh, what's that? So, so now you're really starting to experience boundless. Just the discovery of the universe is boundless. You haven't built your home yet, but you're still, you're getting confused, more confused by the second on where to build my universe. But right now you're wandering around the portal seeker network that you just stumbled across that takes you to all these different planets. Well, be careful if you make it to the Portal Seeker Network, because all of these different planets are not the same, because you could end up at Delta Cancret, and it's foggy here, and I have a breathing uh, thing like I'm drowning in water that's going down, and when that reaches all the way down, I'm going to start taking damage, and I'm going to die because I'm currently on a Tier 4 planet that I don't have the skills to breathe in. So I'm gonna run. Oh my god, tier 4, wait. I'm still dying. Now I'm on a tier 5 planet. This is even worse. Ah! Run more. And now you're on another tier 5 planet. Oh my god, keep running, keep running. Go, go. Oh, this isn't any better. I'm still dying. Oh, but things have cleared up. I'm back down on a tier 3 planet. Wait, this looks familiar. I've been here before. That's because you have been here before. The Portal Seeker Gateway does a big ring around the universe. And then off to the sides of the tier 3 planets, the ones you can breathe in, are the home planets. So right now we're standing in USA East. Beckon was the planet we started on, right? This is the planet where we came from. And this is the home planet of USA East. We go across here, and at Phenomenorum. This is the more dangerous planet that you could start on in USA East. And then back here is the Tier 3 planet, where the main part of the Gateway Ring is located. So you've discovered Portal Seekers, and you've just figured out how the Portal Seeker Ring works. So now you're like, huh. I can use this information to learn where I want to live. Maybe you decide that I like Betula. This is a pretty planet. But everything seems to be centralized around this hub. And I'm, I'm a hermit. I don't want to be around this hub. So you could just run through one of the more obscure portals. So this this ring here with all these portals these are shops this is the shopping ring so uh, I could jump through a portal to a shop and maybe uh, go exploring from there or I could go down to the city portal ring and go through the cities and set out from there or maybe I just want to head out from one of the player portals which is the exterior portion of this ring yeah, let's just head out from a random player portal. So we go through this random player portal, and now we're at a completely different part of Betula. Some weird guy who's put blocks of many colors down, um, and evidently lives in a hole in the ground. Yeah, let's get away from here, right? That, that's kind of weird. But... You don't have to run long, and you start to see that the world is very pristine, very not built, very desolate. There's not a lot of people here. Oh, and there's some flat ground and, and nice colors. Oh yeah, this is for me, right? That's what you're thinking, because you're a hermit, and you want to get away from society, and you want to be in, in nice terrain where where you can see the reflection of the water. Yeah, this might be the place you want to live. But remember, you're on a tier 3 planet right now. And tier 3 planets mean 
danger, Will Robinson. That type of danger. That's a stout cuddle trunk. And he's not very friendly. He will chase you to the ends of the earth. Well, normally they chase you to the ends of the earth. In this episode, they decide to not. Or maybe I lost him in the trees. But hey, this is where you want to live, so you're going to have to deal with learning to cope with the wildlife around here. And oh, what a spot this would be, huh? Look at that beautiful reflection off that water, the flat area. You're like, yep, yeah, this is where I want to put my house. And now you can do it. Because you're not tied down to some location you first decided to live at because you needed to do the tutorial and you felt trapped there. Explore. Make Boundless your home where you truly want it to be your home. And that's my last tidbit in this tutorial. Anyway, Boundless Universe, this has been Solf. As always, it's been fun, and I hope you enjoy this video. Peace.